You're listening to Just Women on Brooklyn's Radio. You can join in by emailing any comments or questions you may have to justwomen at brooklynsradio.co.uk or check us out on Facebook. Search for Just Women at Brooklyn's Radio. Just Women is just what you need. Welcome to Just Women with me, Joe McGowan, introducing more interviews recorded remotely by myself and fellow presenters Jackie Mitchell and Ivana O'Brien. And now here is my interview with Liz Allen. My guest now is Liz Allen of Full Circle Continuous Improvement, who helps businesses achieve sustainable processes to help them succeed. Welcome to Just Women, Liz. Thank you for inviting me. Nice to meet you, Jo. It's great to have you on. Yeah, it's great. Um, So yeah, just start by telling me a little bit about your background and how you came to run Full Circle. So I... I'm originally, so I live in Reading and I'm originally a bit of a northerner. So I'm a Yorkie. I'm, um, I'm from Halifax. I moved oh. down south in the mid nineties. And, and it was one of those things. I worked for the same company down south that yeah. it was kind of like, I worked for the head office um, in, in Slough yeah. um, when I moved down here and I'd been working for them in Leeds. And it was one of those things that I start, and I've been doing this for some time when you start seeing things that are kind of going on like lack of communication yeah. with people between departments and processes that aren't working properly and at the time speaking up in the role that I was in mm. was a bit kind of like um my voice is you know I have a voice yeah but it wasn't necessarily listened to so so kind of as time went on and I went to work for different companies I kept seeing the same thing yeah you know diff- different problems kind of coming up but it wasn't until I kind of came back in as a as a consultant yeah that people started listening Mm -hmm. and I'm not one of those consultants where people you know they say oh we'll take your watch and tell you what the time is yeah you know I'm I'm kind of really hands-on type of person so so it it was trying to get into the nitty-gritty of why Mm -hmm. these things were happening no it's interesting isn't it because it's it's almost like you know that I think lots of people will know within a company or an organization that certain processes don't work they're perhaps not efficient but as you say it's having the confidence to speak up and 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 sometimes you think it's best not to not to get yeah. involved but actually having an outside pair of eyes who can be much more objective and isn't involved in the office politics a lot of the time that can Very be true. such a such a valuable thing for a business and organization to to invest in um but yeah yes. no it's, it's it's really interesting isn't it because I'm sure lots of us have worked in organizations where we think if only we could just do that slightly <laughs> differently it would make life so much easier um, but it's but what I try and do so so kind of moving so I've been in consultancy for continuous improvement like I said since the late 1990s yeah. um but what I find really interesting is training people. Yeah. So I I want people to learn what I've learned. Yeah. You know, I yeah. want them to be able to use the tools. Mm. And so I, I really like that kind of knowledge transfer side yeah. of things. So so I will use lots of anecdotes and stories mm. and the tools. So I use I use a specific toolkit. Yeah. Well, a couple of toolkits. One of the tools, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh is called lean process improvement. And then there's another yeah. one that I've started using lately. Um, in the last few years called Six Sigma but I only use a little smattering of that but it's actually giving people the ability to be able to use those tools for themselves Mm. I want them to come out so I I actually um, run training sessions and I want them to actually be able to utilize those same tools and make make their lives more sustainable because you know nobody wants to be running around like like a headless chicken yeah. at, at work you know and so I'm trying to I try and give them that ability to be able to mm. step back learn the tools you see people with the light bulb moment mm. when they go oh, I know where I can use that I yeah. totally get this mm. and then they come back the following week and go we've done all this stuff yeah which is just which is just so for me it's so rewarding so I I mm. you know I I feel really really happy mm. that I can be involved in these kind of things so I suppose it's empowering people you know to sort of go Absolutely. off and, and work with their own processes and systems within their organizations but you know when they come to something new maybe a new process needs to be implemented they've got those tools to actually apply that and actually make it great from the outset so that that's yeah. great yeah, yeah that's you've fun. used my favorite word empowerment because uh, I think it's 
it's so it's so important it is so important to actually let people kind of be involved and Mm. and I, I when I start working with companies and especially working with when you go into a company and you work with the the, the hierarchy it's getting them to recognize yeah. the the importance of it mm. at a higher level mm. because mm. if you don't have people on board at a, from a higher level mm. then you're less likely to be able yes. to roll it out yeah it's always getting that buy-in isn't it really it's, it's yeah. sort of you know and and again I suppose giving people the tools to be able to get that buy-in as well how to approach that sort of thing is important as well definitely so I I also talk to people about kind of communication and and sort of Mm. managing resistance because there's always there's always going to be people who will resist change yeah we yeah I mean look at what we've gone through in the last kind of two years we're talking nearly two years now yeah you know we none of us had a choice in that no you know but we've 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 had to handle it we've had to manage Mm. it so we know that as human beings we can cope with change but actually if you have it enforced on you, especially mm. in your working environment, it, it's lots of people start putting the barriers up and yes. going, no, no, I'm not, I'm not interested in this. I, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm. But actually it's getting those people to open up and think differently and recognize, well, actually you might not think it's broke, but there's better ways of doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Cause sometimes, you know, something does work really well, but if it's a process that works really well, but by just re, you know, looking at one part of it could save X amount of hours or, you know, Absolutely. all of those things that, that it's worth doing, isn't it really? Because that's the one thing that is, time is a precious commodity. And, and you know, if we can claw any of that back, that's always a win. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. And like I say, you know, they, there's lots of things I, w- I was talking to somebody um last night about kind of operational issues mm. and nobody makes mistakes on purpose but usually no. when you're under pressure yeah. these things happen people make mistakes things happen especially mm. when you've got kind of manual processes even automated processes mm. need to be programmed correctly yeah but it's it's a matter of giving people that ability mm. to again to be able to sit back and just recognize where they are yeah. and sometimes like you say you need somebody externally to come yes. in to be able to point these things out but guiding them through mm. so I like kind of I tend to handhold people through these things mm. and you know and make sure that they're happy and that they understand yeah. them because it's not the stuff that the tools that the toolkit I use it's not they're not um difficult no they just take time to implement yeah so, and you know obviously business as usual gets in the way mm. and so it, but it does need it need that kind of commitment from the top and I suppose it's also it's it's people being able to have the opportunity to self-reflect and reflect on how things are working and you know as you say everybody's human everybody makes mistakes things do go wrong but I suppose it's having the opportunity to be able to say yep this didn't go as we thought it would be how can we improve it um I think it reminds me a bit of the there's a book called black box thinking I don't know whether you've you've read it which talks a lot about um it, it, the, the author compares sort of like um the medical profession with the um airline professions and how okay. you know if anything goes wrong in the air airline profession there is a big inquiry and and everything is laid open yeah whereas in a lot in the medical profession quite often it's it, it closed ranks and, and it isn't investigated yeah. as to where it can go yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. And just two examples of, of different approaches really um yeah, yeah definitely so what do you find are the most common problems that businesses that you work with have? You know, is there a particular sort of area that that, that you find is a, is a real common thing? A lot of them. I mean, all companies have bottlenecks. They, yeah. they have they have issues, but some but some issues are brought on by a lack of a lack of communication. Yeah. So so that siloed methods of working Mm. you know because I work here that person works there yeah that person works there but they don't actually know what one each each other does Mm. Um, say for example I've worked in finance previously and you'd kind of get to to month end and then there'd be people having a go at Mm. finance people because why do you need this now I'm busy you know Mm. I'm trying to get you know sales kind of I'm trying to get my sales in but actually trying to kind of 
be that conduit where people kind of, you know, you could get people to talk to each other and get them to understand. And then they go, oh, right. OK, so that is why you keep asking me for these things at that mm. point in time. I think that that bit is, is really important and getting that communication, especially cross cross communication across mm. departments that, you know, you can make as you can put as many fixes or improvements in places as, as you want. But if you've got if you haven't got the right amount of or right, you know, numbers of people communicating, then then it whatever yeah. you've done is probably going to fail because they're not talking to each other. No. And maybe yeah. because they think it's been enforced on them. Mm. Just It's about kind of getting people to engage with it, really. But I think I it's, say, it's understanding, it's isn't it? Yeah. An understanding yeah. that communication and then getting that understanding of why something is important to somebody else that might not seem so important to you. You know, we're all human and, and can empathise. So, you know, it, it's sort of, you know, understanding the, the process and, and and what that means to each person in that process chain I suppose yeah and like you say so it's kind of it's about I think the the biggest thing that that I see happening or not happening mm. is the fact that you'll have hierarchy not sharing the KPIs for yeah. example the key performance indicators yeah. the things that that actually these are the key reasons for you to be your you're joie mm. de vivre because you want to make these targets mm. meet these targets mm. but if you don't share them with the people that are working with you then how do they know no. how, how you know they're exactly just, they're kept in the dark aren't yeah. they yeah no it, yeah exactly I totally agree with you there um, now I've I've sort of obviously looked at your your website and and you run a number of different programs, don't you, to help yes. help businesses? Yeah. So can you explain a little bit more about the, the programs that you run? Okay, so so there's there's three kind of main programs and a little mini one that I've got, which is just kind of a little bit of a taster that we've just yeah. launched, and that that little one's called um, le- learning to brainstorm in thirty minutes because I think that's a really important thing that people don't always mm. um, don't always feel comfortable with. Yeah. So there's that one, and that's kind of like a, what we call an evergreen program. It's yeah. recorded. Yeah. It's it's kind of, it's basically it's less than thirty minutes, but actually the whole point with the program with the little mini program is. That, mm. that actually the sort of like running running through that and also using the the game this kind of an activity that I've put together in total you should be able to learn and and follow on from that teach teach mm. teach people you work with yeah um the main the main programs I've got are so they're they're all called the power of improvement because I just think there is so much power in mm. in learning learning to uh to improve what what we all do mm. so I've got kind of initiate which is I've, it sounds like I've kind of used I didn't want to use a basic and intermediate get names and that mm. kind of thing so initiate is the starting block yeah. which is basically that it's all delivered live online yeah um, no more than two and a half hours and I'm not I'm not one of these people who is going to do death you know it's not death by zoom <laughs> or death by teams I intersperse it I've worked with a um, um, a game developer we've actually got some on, online games oh that sounds great the learning so and there's a couple of other platforms we're kind of using as Fab. well but that's that's sort of embedding all the tools learning the tools embedding the tools and actually getting people to a point where after 12 weeks they should be on the route to actually getting their first project their first mm. improvement project in place and that's kind of six to ten people on a on a program the next one is called activate so so that is more of a next steps taking your champions from the from the first group so the idea theoretically would be if you've got a company that had say six people that mm. I mean, it doesn't always have to work like that it can be three from one company three from another as long as there's no no issues with non-disclosure mm. etc um but actually taking them through project management change management so it's that next level up. Yeah. it's the people who will be managing those that have actually done the first program but you should be able to recognize those from the pro- first program. yeah and then the final program so that that second one is is 12 weeks as well online uh, live online and then the final one is is inspire so so the 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 idea behind that is that people who are managing you know kind of like those those people on the other two programs it will uh, will run alongside the other two programs and actually this person will manage the overall team so they will be in charge but it's a mentoring mm. program so they get me or one of my colleagues for 6 months every yeah. week 
So it's a, it's a really kind of hands on making sure that, people, you know, whoever's on the program is happy. They're comfortable with what they're learning, what their teams are learning and just taking them through that kind of hand holding stage. So so that's kind of that's kind of it, really. Yeah, that so, sounds great. So it gives a, a really, you know, if a company was to sort of do all of those, they would get a, a, a really good um, overview and ongoing tools and methods to use that actually can be used company wide not just a few people so that you can see how they would make really big strides with with that um by sort of exactly that which is great it's great well unfortunately people forward we are running out of time now. It's been fascinating talking <laughs> it goes to very you. quickly, doesn't it? It does go very <laughs> quickly. So I suppose my final question is, um, you know, sort of who who would you like to most work with uh, in 2022 in terms of the sort of types of businesses? So so I I have worked in manufacturing and service organisations, so different sectors, but my heart kind of lies with with service sectors. So kind of tele, telecoms, energy. Yeah you know, kind of utility companies, transport and logistics, supply chain, that kind of type of those types of organization, because um, the tools that I've used have been around in manufacturing yeah. for a long, long time. I just don't think service organizations are using them as much. Yeah. So so I'm looking I look at companies that are between 30 and 300. They're growing. Yeah. yeah. But and they get to a point where they're still using those same processes and procedures but actually you've got much bigger customers to, mm. to look after yeah. and, and you can't kind of do the same thing no. that you always did. So those are the people that I'm, I'm looking at. If you kind of go very small companies, it will work, but you have to have smaller numbers yeah. and obviously business as usual gets in the way. So yeah. it doesn't, it's not always kind of, it's, it doesn't always work for them, no. but it, it, it does in some ways. But um, so but yeah, basically so companies of, that are growing, that have perhaps outgrown the processes that worked when they had smaller customers, but that are actually now need to really step up to sort of achieve their growth plans is, is who you definitely. can really, really help well. That's fantastic. It works, it works hand in hand with what they're trying yeah. to achieve as well. So, yes, it definitely sounds like it. So how can people find out a bit more about working about you with with, with you rather? Okay, so my website is fullcircleci.co.uk. Um, or actually, I have a, I've got a Facebook group. Oh, yes. If anybody yep. is interested in Facebook. So I'm, I'm on LinkedIn mostly in Facebook, but I've got a very a little following on Facebook. Uh, the group is called The Power of Improvement. Yep. And you'll see my face on there. Every Thursday, I do a live on there called Chinwag Thursday. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm good at. Yeah. <laughs> so, so basically, I bring people on kind of like every couple of weeks. And I also talk about topical things as well. Well, so. fabulous okay well that's that's great place just to find to find you thank you so much for talking with us that was liz allen of full circle continuous improvement details of past and future guests are on our website brooklandsradio.co.uk forward slash just women and you can find us on facebook too at justwomen.br and twitter at brooklands radio So thank you for listening and join us again next week for Just Women, 1pm on Tuesdays, repeated 8pm on Thursdays. And until then, it's goodbye from the Just Women team. This is Just Women every Tuesday at one o'clock on Brooklyn's radio.